Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Shilpi here. This video is a continuation of the previous video in which I had covered the other aspects of trigeminal neuralgia. So let's get started. So coming to the surgical treatment, it can be directed peripherally or it can be directed centrally. So peripherally, basically in the peripheral branches, it can be directed. Centrally, it can be directed either at the trigeminal ganglion or the nerve roots. So they have, uh, you know, surgical procedures have a better prognosis when they are carried out on patients with typical classical trigeminal neuralgia. So microvascular uh, decompression has the best prognosis when it's performed within seven years of trigeminal neuralgia onset. So coming to the peripheral procedures, one of the earliest forms of treatment, they are peripheral neurectomies. So there can be sectioning of the nerve which can be done at the mental foramen or at the supraorbital. So neurectomy may be basically remove the you know peripheral nerve fibers that are present, which is known as peripheral neurectomy. So there can be sectioning of the nerve at the mental foramen or at the supraorbital or infraorbital foramen but the success rates for neurectomy are conflicting and it involves relatively small series with short term follow up so infraorbital neurectomy can be done in two ways it can be either done through carvac loop incision or it can be done through bronze trans antral approach then peripheral neurectomy, neurectomy basically carries the danger of inducing traumatic neuropathic pain then alcohol injections greater than 95 percent can also be used you know either into the peripheral nerve area for inferior alveolar nerve for infraorbital nerve mental nerve supraorbital supra nerve and mandibular nerve or it can be injected centrally into the gasserian ganglion so basically it causes neurolysis and it can result in the destruction of the nerve fibers and it can result in wallerian de uh, de degeneration of axonal fibers and schwann cells alcohol may induce herpes zoster reactivation and also cause bony necrosis so pain control and multiple injections may have to be given in these patients then peripheral glycerol injection have also been employed and the, due to the risk of you know developing neuropathic pain the peripheral procedure should be reserved for patients who have significant medical problems that make the other procedures unsafe so coming to the central procedures so the first one is percutaneous trigeminal rhizotomy so these are the procedures that are carried out percutaneously and three techniques are used at the ganglion level so first is the radio frequency rhizolysis so it creates a lesion through the application of heat and then there are glycerol injection which is also known as chemical rhizotomy so in that we basically inject 0.1 to 0.4 ml of glycerol into the trigeminal cistern and then there is balloon compression which is by inflating a balloon in the Meckel's cave to compress the gasserian ganglion. The, so the percutaneous procedures are basically destructive and they involve the penetration uh, you know, of the foramen ovale with a cannula and then a controlled lesion of the trigeminal ganglion or root can be uh, done by you know the various procedures which are described above then the main goal of doing all these procedures either through application of heat or you know either by you know chemical injection or you know by compression of the gasserian ganglion the main goal is to selectively destruct the pain fibers the a delta and the c fibers while preserving the touch fibers that are present that is a alpha and beta fibers that are present in the trigeminal nerve so that the sensory the sensation is retained the sensation of the touch is retained but the pain fibers are basically destroyed and these modalities they result in excessive uh, you know excellent pain relief but they are associated with high rates of recurrence and complications then injection of boiling water into the gasserian ganglion has also been reported to be beneficial in causing respite from pain so this is one of the treatments that's been mentioned in one of the articles which was you know way back i think in 1955 and also in schaefer's the injection of the boiling water
then coming to the second one which is you know microvascular decompression so basically this procedure surgically separates all the intracerebral arteries that which are in proximity to the trigeminal nerve they can be separated during the open fossa you know these are the open procedures during the open fossa posterior surgery they can be separated so this is the first choice surgery in patients with classical trigeminal neuralgia there can be severe complications several complications like hearing loss meningitis cerebral fluid leak wound infection and sensory changes that can occur and after 10 years 30 to 40 percent can uh, patients can show a relapse but it is one of the most cost effective surgical approach to classical trigeminal neuralgia then coming to the third one that is the gamma knife so in the gamma knife stereotactic radio surgery is basically the minimal invasive technique and it delivers radio surgical doses 70 to 90 gray to the trigeminal nerve root at the vascular compression site so basically at the root entry zone or you know which uh, we are using the term the transition zone so basically in that area it delivers radio surgical focused you know radio surgical doses in that area and this can result over a period of time this can result into axonal degeneration and necrosis and can interrupt the pain signals so this provides very good and excellent initial pain relief but the main disadvantage of and it's not very invasive as well but the main disadvantage of using gamma but a knife is the stereotactic surgery radio surgery is that it is expensive so periods of relief pain are shortest for peripheral procedures they are intermediate for the drug therapy or the pharmacological treatment that we use or the rhizotomies that we do and it's the longest for you know microvascular decompressions then neurosurgical methods they provide relief for years all together but you know patients can present with facial dysesthesia that is distorted sensation or you know combination of anesthesia and spontaneous pain in certain areas then the other complications you know can occur as well then coming to the most important elements in the care of patients with trigeminal neuralgia so first we need to establish the diagnosis so we ex- mostly you know we make the diagnosis clinically so we examine the patient clinically we take the history of the patient and usually clinically we can diagnose the patient of trigeminal neuralgia we check the diagnostic criteria which has been given by sweet or icht 3 criteria which is given we check the diagnostic criteria and we can you know basically diagnose it clinically then we can go for physical and neurological examination in such cases and other paraclinical tests like ecg mri of brain brain stem blood test can be carried out and we need to rule out any kind of odontogenic pain that is present in these patients then non pharmacological treatment should be given firstly you know for a patient we should online consultation should be planned anxiety and depression pain coping skills you should ask the patient not to be very careful not to touch the trigger area so that can be done and we should inform the patient about the surgical options and also oral hygiene needs to be maintained in these cases patient should visit a dentist because you know such patients will go unbrush for uh, for many days because even brushing can trigger pain then pharmacological treatment is given to the patient and if the pharmacological uh, you know during pharmacological treatment because you know it elevates the liver enzymes and all during while they are on these drugs uh, pharmacological treatment during that time liver and renal function tests should be done you know at regular intervals for the patient and if the pharmacological treatment is not working for the patient during that time we need to do a neurosurgical treatment and uh after that follow up has to be done for the patient so if it's classical trigeminal neuralgia microvascular decompression is the first choice and for ablative procedures are only recommended when there is no neurovascular contact then follow up should be done properly in these So that brings us to the end of the video. So if you have any doubts or queries, you can leave a message in the comment section below. And if you have liked the video, do hit the like button and don't forget to share and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.